News Channel 15 presents The Film Reel, the talk show where we discuss everything going on in the world of movies and television with hosts Bryce West and Ian Lloyd. This is The Film Reel. Hello and welcome into The Film Reel, the talk show where we discuss everything going on in the world of movies and television. I am Bryce West. And I'm Ian Lloyd. And today we have a little bit of a different episode for you all. Uh, this isn't the the time in which we normally air. This is this is a Wednesday, but uh, we have a very special episode for you all today. This is sort of a film reel uh, special presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be we're going to be talking about um, streaming services uh, that, uh, for this episode. Uh, that's all we're going to be talking about for today, uh, because there's there's a lot going on in the mm -hmm. world of streaming. Uh, there's there's uh, quite a bit of streaming services. It's not just uh, Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video anymore. There's there's quite a, quite a few new players, uh, and so yeah, let's get right into it. So um, I mean, we have Netflix, the big yep. the big dog. You know, uh, it's been uh, here forever. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like the OG. Of, yes. of the streaming services, um, and it's and it's the first one in our majors category. Uh, we have uh, majors on the left, uh, mini majors uh, in the middle, and then uh, minor streaming services uh, on the right. Um, Netflix has 231 uh, million subscribers, mm -hmm. definitely the the most subscribed to streaming service. Uh, however, uh, Netflix is doing some wacky things right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, with the whole password sharing, and now you got to pay extra to have different households mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. So it's a bummer to see. Yeah. Uh, as the first one, Netflix uh, feels like it's on its high horse with its uh, just upgrades and like increased costs, and also, like you said, just like um, it's password sharing. And this could really set a tone for like where other streaming services go from here. Right, and uh, honestly, with this, uh, it doesn't really seem like people are too pleased with what how, the way Netflix is going right now. I mean, you already have to pay like their their most expensive tier, I believe, is twenty dollars a month, and then that's not even enough to be able to share with your own family members in your own household. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, that's a little crazy. Uh, yeah. So who knows? Maybe this won't be number one for for very much longer. Uh, number two, uh, the mo the second most subscribed uh, service is Prime video this kind of surprised me uh, I didn't know uh, prime video had so many subscribers however I think a lot of this is due to prime being its own yeah. thing as well and then but you get prime video as a part of Am your existing Amazon prime subscription if they were divorced from each other I doubt this would even be in the major league yeah. of the uh, <laughs> the streaming services um, but a hey, uh, if you got prime you got prime video right so. so prime has uh, 205 million uh, subscribers could honestly uh, uh, take down Netflix at some point, uh, just due to the fact that it's a part of your existing Amazon Prime subscription just for shipping. Uh, uh, and then Netflix is doing a bunch of weird stuff that people don't like. So uh, uh, that's that's probably why Prime uh, Video has around uh, 205 million subscribers. Uh, the next one here is uh, Disney Plus at 158 million subscribers. Um, this one's clear. Uh, you know, it's Disney. They're the they're the powerhouse. Yep. You know, the biggest uh, studio in the world. I would probably say. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, they have everything. They have their own Disney stuff. They have uh, Pixar. They have National Geographic, Marvel, Star Wars. You know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of 20th Century Fox stuff. So they um, have all the big hitters of like the right. insular what Disney fans want. You yes. Know? It's uh, it's you're if you got Disney Plus, you know what you want. Right. It's, they got what you want. It, it's a very, I guess, maybe fandom-oriented service. Extremely. You know, uh, I mean, if you like Marvel, you have to have Disney+. Plus. If you like you Star like, Wars, yes. you have to have uh, so, so, I mean, if you're a fan of those properties, you're going to be subscribed to uh, Disney+. Plus. And Star Wars and Marvel are two of the biggest franchises in the world. Yep. Uh, so uh, that helps, helps out their numbers a lot. Um, next up is Max. Uh, this is, of course, a weird one. Max is brand new to the scene, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which makes, may make some people wonder, how is this in the Major League? Well, it's because it used to be HBO Max. But now it's just called Max because they combine HBO Max with Discovery Plus, which still exists, uh, as yes. you can see on the screen. We'll, we'll be talking about that one later. But HBO Max does not exist anymore. Right, so. which is really weird. But, H but Max has the HBO Max stuff and the Discovery Plus stuff all in one service. Um, and honestly, 
Um, I've been using Max. It's actually not that bad of a service. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're going to be talking a lot about Max today, but um, there's been a lot of controversy with them removing uh, original content, content that you cannot watch anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and 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 Max, HBO for first, but now Max is, was the one to kind of start that trend. And even like before, you know, Max, and it yeah. was HBO Max. It was pretty new to the scene already, like 2019, 2020 yes. was yeah. when it came out, around the same time as Disney Plus, and it already like just had a boom of popularity because it has a wide, varying like amount of different like quality content. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, so Max uh, currently has 76.8 million subscribers. Pretty much all of those are carried over from HBO Max because if you had an HBO Max subscription, then you could just it just carried over to Max. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but uh, that that's definitely an interesting one. We're going to be talking about a lot about Max today. Um, but the last for the majors is Paramount Plus at 60 million subscribers. It's got your Star Trek, your Survivor, that kind of stuff. It's 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 got a lot of the CBS stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this one comes in at at 60 million subscribers. Uh, this uh, Paramount Plus and Showtime will actually be combining uh, into one service later on this year. Right now, they're two different ones, even though they've kind of already combined the two services, but it's kind of like a Mac situation where you can still yeah. subscribe to both. Uh, so There's bundles and they're yeah. uh, collaborating, but they still have their own separate services. So yeah, uh, uh, the, the one cool thing about Paramount Plus is that it actually comes uh, with a sort of live TV aspect to it you can uh, get the uh, CBS channel uh, as a part of that um, uh, subscription mm -hmm. uh, the live the actual live channel so I mean if you want to watch Survivor Amazing Race uh, MacGyver that kind of stuff um, uh, you you can watch those shows live with uh, with your Paramount Plus subscription so I think that's pretty cool uh, so moving on now to sort of the mini majors, we have Apple TV Plus. This one is is a kind of a weird one because this is like one of the few streaming services that uh, that focus almost solely on originals. Yeah, uh, it really does. So I mean, there's not really a lot of acquired programming on Apple TV. You, if you're uh, subscribed to Apple TV, you you really subscribe for their original programming, which kind of surprises me that it's at uh, 50 million subscribers because this seems like one of those services that like, oh, I my show's on for mm -hmm. a few months, so I'm gonna subscribe and then unsubscribe. But it makes sense because every time somebody buys an Apple product, you instantly get six months free. That's true, and that's a great incentive for somebody to jump in. They might forget about it, or they might watch some of the originals and be like, hey, this is actually quality content. I'll right. stick with it. For sure. Uh, and, and the originals on Apple TV Plus are, are really, really good. But uh, moving on to Hulu at 48.2 million subscribers. Disney Plus and Hulu are about to be combining into one service. Uh, so that's going to be a common trend that you're seeing with these companies that ha uh, have more than one streaming service or, or have acquired companies and then get another uh, streaming service through that. Uh, you know. So, But now Hulu and Disney Plus are finally going to be combining into one service. They already have the Hulu, Disney Plus, ESPN Plus bundle. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully with this merge thing, they'll just be able to combine it all into the one service. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but doesn't Hulu also have the same like Paramount Plus like live TV thing? Yeah, so that's interesting. So Hulu does have a live TV option, but unlike Paramount Plus, Paramount Plus just has the CBS networks. Uh, Hulu with live TV is an actual live TV uh, service. Um, like your Dish Network or DirecTV or, 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 or a YouTube TV, st something like that. So it's going to be interesting how they're going to handle that whenever they combine the Hulu stuff with Disney Plus. Is it going to be, is there going to be a Disney Plus live TV service or uh, how, how is that going to work? That's going to be really interesting. And the last of the, the, the mini majors is uh, Stars. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, it's it's kind of like a HBO where it's just like, the Stars Network, just and it's just their own streaming service. They have a lot of Sony stuff. They have a, a lot of first deal uh, with Sony stuff. So a lot of the Spider-Man movies show up on Stars yeah. first, and then they'll show up on Disney Plus later. Um, 
So uh, that's an this is an interesting one. I guess if you're really into stars, you know, uh, which people are, 30.3 uh, million subscribers right now. Last time I used the streaming service, uh, I, the app was not great. It uh, <laughs> does it's not really user friendly. So uh, yeah, I, I was surprised to see it in the like the yeah. medium league. Here. But but stars is another one where I think you can get it bundled with like Hulu or Prime Video or something like. That. I don't know. The, these streaming bundles are so. We'll weird. get into it. Yeah, uh, but uh, next. Next up, uh, for uh, now moving on to the minor streaming services, is Discovery Plus, which just got merged into HBO Max, which is now called Max. But for some reason, Discovery Plus still exists as a separate streaming service. I guess if you only want the Discovery content, uh, you can subscribe to Discovery Plus for a smaller fee. Um, yeah, that's that's basically the gist of that. Uh, uh, 24 million subscribers. Uh, next up is Curiosity Stream. This is an interesting one. Uh, this uh, this is one of the streaming services that is unique, and it's not really owned by any major company besides themselves. Uh, they have 23 million subscribers, and it's basically just sort of it's educational documentaries. content and documentaries yeah. and stuff and like that. This is a great streaming service because not only does it have a ton of documentaries that are all like, well, not all interesting, but <laughs> there's a lot of interesting stuff on the platform. And each month it's only like $3 for a subscription, or you can just buy an annual plan for like 16 bucks. It's like it's not bad. extremely cheap and extremely worth it. Um, I definitely think it's slept on there for like go. all these streaming services. Uh, uh, next up is Peacock. I was surprised that this one is so low uh, because yeah. they have a lot of uh, uh, high caliber uh, content. I know at some point they had the Harry Potter movies. I'm pretty sure they're on Max right now, but sometimes they're on both. Uh, so I don't know. They have a lot of good horror stuff on Peacock. Yes, they do. Um, uh, I think all the DreamWorks movies are on Peacock. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to see that, that they're only, uh, they only have uh, 22 million subscribers. No. They also do have some live TV stuff, but it's more similar to like uh, something like Pluto TV where it's like a free live TV thing. Yeah. They don't, uh, I don't think they always have the NBC network just running like Paramount Plus does with CBS. Uh, now, when the Olympics were on, they did. So it seems like sometimes they have NBC, the network, and sometimes they don't. Or maybe I just don't know how they use the service properly because their uh, interface is horrible yeah. on Peacock. Well, I mean, <laughs> now but, okay, are the subscribing numbers like for the free trial? Like, well, not trial, but like there's a free uh, version. Of I Peacock. feel like if this included because they do, there is a free version of Peacock. I feel like if this included the free version of Peacock, these numbers would be way higher than 22 million. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I would, I would bet, yeah. uh, but the free version of Peacock is practically useless. Uh, there's like anything that you would want to watch on Peacock, you can't on the free subscription. Yeah. Uh, w one interesting thing about Peacock is they do have all the WWE stuff. So if you're really in the For WWE, you're going to be subscribed to Peacock. Um, but other than that, um, they got DreamWorks. They might, they sometimes have Harry Potter. Uh, they have a lot of good horror, but if you're not into that stuff, there's not really a good reason to be subscribed to Peacock. There's some great niche categories yeah. uh, in Peacock. Definitely worth checking out yeah. if you got the time. I mean, I remember whenever Peacock first came out, I subscribed solely for The Office. But then when I got bored of that, you know, then there's no reason to have it anymore. Um, uh, and then moving on to uh, Showtime. Uh, I was surprised this one was so low. 17.4 million uh, subscribers, similar to Stars. Uh, it's kind of like a network, just got their own streaming service. Um, uh, and, but it's also gonna be combined into Paramount Plus later this year. So uh, later this year, it won't exist as its own app anymore. It'll just be a part of Paramount Plus. Uh, so, I mean, uh, like Paramount Plus, Showtime, you're able to stream the Showtime actual TV channels on uh, the streaming service. So I wonder whenever they combine Showtime with Paramount Plus, if that'll carry over. Maybe. Uh, I would assume so. I, I don't know why they would get rid of that, considering Paramount Plus already does something similar with CBS. But yeah, and then lastly, we have uh, Crunchyroll uh, at 10.7 million subscribers. Again, there is a free version of Crunchyroll. I, I doubt that uh, the 10.7 is including the free uh, users, uh, because I, I think the number would be much higher than 10.7 million, but it's exclusively anime. Uh, it's uh, uh, Crunchyroll combined with Funimation not too long ago, so now those two are one, mm -hmm. uh, even though you can still subscribe to the other, but again, it's uh, 
he's described a country role, you get Crunchyroll and Funimation content. Uh, uh, basically, basically, if you're a fan of anime, you're subscribed to Crunchyroll, but it is a pretty niche audience. Uh, uh, it, it, I think yeah. there's a huge market for it. Um, yeah. Tons of like new generation kids and teenagers yeah. and even adults love it. And right. I think there is a like spot in our culture sure. for like 2D animation that's yeah. like being carved out by um, non-Western animation. Right. For sure. Yeah. I, I just think with it being like, okay, we're going to only stream this type of content. That's probably why uh, it, the subscriber number is only 10.7 sure. million. But again, there is a free version. So, so I, I feel like they have a lot more active users than 10.7 million. Um, it's just those are the ones actually paying for the premium content. Uh, so now that we've gone over pretty much all the current uh, streaming services, we're going to take a quick break and talk about some of the problems uh, that have arisen uh, with this new streaming environment. Uh, stay tuned. News Channel 15, winner of the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System Award for the nation's best community college TV station. I am Jordan Crow. I'm a registered nurse and director of case management here at Wabash General Hospital. I started my journey with Wabash General Hospital in 2011 and a part of the health occupations program. After that experience, I decided I did want to pursue nursing. What matters the most to me about working at Wabash General Hospital is the flexibility that it allows for me to live and work close to home. It allows more time with my family and also allows me the opportunity to serve the community that I grew up in. Come see the Tri-State's largest display of high-quality affordable furniture and home decor at Timberlake Furniture. With a warehouse spanning more than eight football fields in length, you'll find what you're looking for and can take it home with you the same day. Shop the latest styles from the name brands you know and trust, all at the lowest prices anywhere. Check out our huge selection of top-quality mattresses from Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and Stearns and & Foster. And shop our closeout mattress sale going on now. Timberlake Furniture, so your house feels like home. Welcome back into the film reel. So uh, now that we've kind of gone over all of the current streaming services that we've had, uh, we're, we're going to kind of talk about uh, some of the problems uh, that are, are kind of arising uh, with these uh, new uh, with, with, with these services. Uh, so we're, we're going to start right off with Max. Uh, you know, Max, uh, you know, I, I, God, where to even begin? Uh, so, I mean, before Max became Max, uh, 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 HBO Max uh, kind of caused a lot of controversy whenever they started removing uh, HBO Max original programs, yep. the programs that you could only watch uh, on HBO Max. Uh, uh, there's no other way to watch them. They were gone, uh, taken off the service for uh, tax write-off purposes or whatever. They don't have to pay residuals, that kind of stuff. So cost-cutting purposes. Um, and stuff like that. Um, they can't. The, the most infamous example of this uh, is whenever they canceled the the DC uh, movie Batgirl. Yep. Uh, it was fully filmed. Uh, you know, uh, they they shot the whole movie uh, and then they they canceled it. Uh, yeah. They did uh, the same thing. They were going to make a new Scooby Doo movie. Uh, completely, all the lines recorded. It was animated. All the lines were recorded. Uh, they they canceled that one too. Mm -hmm. um, so. This, this is going to become a very major problem. That, that, yeah. that set a very dangerous precedent. We are at the precipice of where these streaming services are going to lead in the future. And I feel like this coincides with the WGA strike yeah. at the moment. The and Writers Guild strike. Yeah. Writers Guild strike. Writers Guild of America. And I feel like um, these streaming services are... Right now, we're at a period where we need to figure out what these streaming services are going to do for the workers and the crews involved, as well as like compensating like the creatives and the the shows. Yeah. Like you said, like they're just just deleting movies or uh, that have released or shows that have been released without any other like. No uh, physical media, no, no physical other media. streaming service to watch it on, anything. And, like, they're just removing these with no other way to legally watch them. Yeah. And it's a bummer, and I feel like it might carry on to other streaming services. Yeah, I mean, like, if, you, if they're not going to release these shows and movies on physical media, which they aren't because they want you to subscribe to their service, um, then this, this 
causes a major problem because now these these shows and movies have almost been erased uh, yeah. from existence. You know, the only way to watch um, uh, 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 like Infinity Train, uh, which was a, a, a cartoon that was a Max original for uh, two seasons, um, uh, the only way to watch those two seasons is to watch them illegally, to pirate them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a major, major issue. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I I don't know I don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen there, but I, I doubt that it's gonna get any much better, especially since uh, with Disney Plus and Hulu merging, uh, both of those services have also started removing content. Um, uh, Willow, a show from Lucasfilm, uh, uh, was recently taken down. Uh, Turner and Hooch, uh, uh, the Mighty Ducks uh, show. Um, a, a lot of these Disney Plus uh, and Hulu originals have been uh, uh, taken taken off of of the services again no other way to watch them besides yeah. pirating um, and even aside from that like physical media for the longest time was a great residual for like movies and production companies that would like maybe not have the best like hit at the box office but they would get their money back through physical media and through the dvd releases and now that's completely changed with right. streaming services, just everything dumping right on there. For so sure. it's, it, we're in a weird landscape right now, and uh, I feel like we're going to see the outcome to that really soon. I think so, too. With that being said, we're going to take another quick break, and after this, we're going to be talking about uh, the differences between binging and weekly releases, as well as uh, what should happen next for streaming services coming up. For over a century, the First National Bank has been here, serving our local communities. We're proud to still be locally owned and managed with friendly customer service from people that you know and trust. We're here to support our neighbors, investing in our communities. We're proud to provide the latest in digital banking technology, serving as your complete financial partner. Visit us online at fnba.bank or stop by one of our convenient locations in Allendale, Mount Carmel, Carmine, or West Salem today. The First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We're your friends, your neighbors, and we support our community. For over 100 years, we've been here, leading the way in community service and innovation. We are Mount Carmel Public Utility Company. College doesn't have to start at an expensive school far away. You can save money and be close to home at Wabash Valley College. Many careers only require a two-year degree or certificate. Or get your general education classes out of the way and transfer to a four-year school. Wabash Valley College has programs in high-demand careers such as physical therapy assistant, advanced manufacturing, marketing, business management, nursing, and radio television. To find out more about Wabash Valley College, go to iecc.edu slash wvc. Welcome back into the film reel to close out today's uh, uh, special presentation on streaming services. We're going to be talking about uh, binging versus uh, weekly releases, the, the benefits and disadvantages of both. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, what should happen next for streaming services. So um, we're, we're going to kind of examine two different shows uh, and, and kind of talk about um, what's good and what's bad about how they release them. So we're going we're gonna to kind of uh, compare Stranger Things and The Mandalorian. One's a massive show for Netflix, the other a massive show for Disney+. Plus. But two of the, the two of them are released in two very different ways. Uh, so Stranger Things, for the most part, uh, season four was a little different, but for the most part, it's just released all episodes all at once. Um, so, uh, basically the audience is talking about them for a week and then they forget about it. Uh, but whereas with the Mandalorian, uh, it's re released by Disney, uh, week by week, uh, each, each episode, uh, uh there's one episode, uh, for the most part a week. And so instead of talking about the show for a week and then it disappears off the internet, you're talking about it for like months at a time. Uh, so th those are kind of the two different things uh, with that. Uh, uh, Ian, can you kind of highlight some of the, the benefits of, of binging a show? Because, I mean, I, we, I've kind of discussed yeah. the benefits of, of weekly releases. Uh, they're talking about it more. But what are some of the benefits of binging? So, like, the binging culture has really disrupted uh, everything when it comes to, like, how we enjoy TV, how we, like, uh, just get entertainment. 
and there are good qualities about it. Like you can just you can get caught up pretty fast. Streaming services, um, in most cases, have found an accessible way to like get people on board and like up to date extremely fast and with their own pace. But I do think, and we're probably this is what we're going to lead yeah. to, how this disruption kind of like has tanked all of like communication when it comes to like yeah. fan interaction and even not just on the internet but just like at workplaces or like communities uh if somebody recommends a show it's like oh you have to watch through the whole season at once yeah. it's not a oh i can get on board with the first two se two episodes and then just like now i'm part of the conversation yeah i mean so i guess the benefits of binging is that you can watch it almost like a movie, uh, an eight to ten to thirteen hour long movie, uh, you know. Um, so, so those are some of the benefits. You just get it all done at once. Um, you don't, you don't have to wait week by week. So, I, I, I think, uh, in some ways, it could be better for the viewer that way. Um, however, for the services itself, um, there's really, I don't really see any benefit to the binge model at all, um, because, because like, like you said, and like we kind of talked about. Um, uh, with binging, whenever you release all the episodes at once, uh, like with Stranger Things, um, I, you, you, you talk about it for, for probably a week at most, and then yep. nobody's talking about Stranger Things for another two and a half, three years. And you're <laughs> trying to play catch up extremely yeah. fast in that one week. Yeah. So you don't get spoiled. Well, yeah, and you don't want to get spoiled online. You don't want to go on Twitter and see spoilers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So you're trying to watch as, as fast as you possibly can. But also, the brain doesn't really retain all that information. No. And so whenever I watch Stranger Things 5, whenever it comes out in, like, 2026, um, I'm going to no, I'm have no recollection of what happened in Season 4. And, uh, you know? Yeah, what used to be the thing was every week you get one episode, and yeah. you would distinctly remember the events of that episode. And now, with eight hour long episodes in a row, it, it really does feel yeah. like a long movie where you can't discern what came from each yeah. episode. And that really like can go into a further right. uh, discussion about what do we want from TV shows? Do we want them to just be long movies or do yeah. we want them to be serialized episode right. week by week stories? Well, and then like with shows with The Mandalorian, whenever it's released week by week, um, I mean, people are talking about that show for months. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, it bring, I, I would feel like that would bring more attention, more eyes to the show and to the service. So um, that, that's, that's some of the, the differences between the two there. I definitely think binging uh, is kind of hurting the whole business model. I definitely think that's something that should probably go away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because, I mean, you can still binge the show whenever it's over. You know, yeah. uh, you know, so binging can still exist, but I don't think it should be released that way. It still works yeah. for catching new audiences up on pre-existing things right. while still keeping, uh, for weekly releases, still keeping everyone like on the same page week by week. Yeah. So the discussion can just grow and the audience for the shows can even grow further than that. So what now? I definitely think that um, like we've definitely dr probably drilled into your heads at this point that we should get rid of the, the whole binge model. I think another thing that we need to, that needs to happen is we definitely need to cut down on some of these streaming services. Um, we're already uh, getting rid of Showtime that's getting combined into uh, Paramount Plus, Hulu getting combined into Disney Plus. Uh, Discovery kind of getting combined in the max. So, so this problem is already getting a little better, uh, but I definitely think that we still don't need this many uh, stars, I think will probably be next. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what it would get combined into because uh, it's kind of off in its own world. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's a lot of a, a lot of Sony stuff, which Sony doesn't really have their own streaming platform, so there's not really much it could get combined into. For most of but, these, they're all just kind of the same, yeah. and they don't really differentiate like too much from each other. Right. Um, I would say seek out the uh, streaming services that play towards your interests more. Yeah. Like um, we didn't talk about it, but uh, there's a horror a streaming service called Shutter. There's the Criterion Channel yeah. streaming services, which does all, all these movies that are like the canon of like film history. And there's a lot to look into, but you got to seek those out. Yeah. And uh, they don't come from Netflix. 
There, and there's a lot of free streaming services that we haven't talked about too. Honestly, we could probably talk for a whole episode about the free streaming services. There are a lot of free streaming services available um, that uh, most of them are ad supported, but you know, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of content there too. So uh, with, with that being said, we're gonna wrap things up here on our uh, film reel special, uh, special presentation. Special on, report. <laughs> special report on streaming services. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned uh, this Friday for our next regular episode where we're going to be talking about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's going to be super exciting. Uh, thank you all so much for watching.